We've all heard stories of businesses that get tons of Etsy traffic from Pinterest. But how the heck do you actually generate that traffic? And is Pinterest even worth it for your business specifically? For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And over the last few months, I've been asking my audience for topics that you'd like me to cover in 2023, with the number one requested topic being Pinterest. Let me start by saying that yes, Pinterest is an amazing place for Etsy sellers to build momentum and to gain traffic and sales for multiple reasons. But as with any social media platform, it does take a bit of time and understanding of how the platform works in order to see those results. In today's video, I'll be sharing a few bare bones pointers that can help you to generate successful pins on Pinterest. That way you can experiment for a few months and decide for yourself if the platform is worth it for you. But first, I wanna take a moment to give a quick shout out to this week's featured shop. Hey you, thanks so much for your love and support. If you'd like to submit for your own shout out, tag Handmade Alphas in a photo or screenshot of yourself watching this video, either in your Instagram feed or Instagram stories. Pinterest is a platform designed to save ideas and build visions and dreams. Remember when you were a teenager and you'd make clipped magazine collages of things like dream cars, houses, or even cute tiger beat boys? Think of Pinterest as the same general idea, but where those ideas can be shared and amplified in order to drive traffic to different websites, including your Etsy shop. So what do people build boards about? pretty much everything. Recipes, outfits, decor ideas, weddings. Some brides will even build wedding boards before they even have someone lined up to marry. Bottom line is if you sell a product, you can probably find a way to market that product on Pinterest. So first, let's start with a few Pinterest basics. Then we'll discuss a few more strategic growth strategies to help you get your Pinterest account off the ground. Tip number one, if you're brand new to the world of Pinterest, be sure to sign up for a business account specifically or switch your personal account to a business account. And just a disclaimer, you'll want to start with a clean slate. So if you already have a ton of unrelated pins on your account, be sure to either delete those boards or just keep your personal account and your business account separate, which is what I personally do. The benefit of having a business account specifically is that you'll gain access to useful analytics, which can help you to identify what is working for you. That way you can make more content similar to that. Tip number two, don't just hop into your Etsy shop and pin all of your listings. This is probably the most common mistake that I see when it comes to Etsy sellers on Pinterest because it's just so darn easy to do. But in most cases, Etsy listing photos aren't formatted at an aspect ratio that's going to help them get noticed in a Pinterest feed. Not to mention, Pinterest doesn't give you the option to properly optimize your pins when you save them right from your Etsy listings. More on that in a moment. But first, let's talk about proper pin aspect ratios. Think about what it's like to scroll through Pinterest on mobile. With 85% of Pinterest users accessing the platform from their phones, it is essential to ensure that your pins are long and vertically oriented. Why? Because long and vertically oriented photos take up more room on a phone screen. And to get noticed on Pinterest, the size of your pins does matter. So here are the image sizes that you can plug right into your Canva account to ensure that you're always creating pins at just the right size. For good pins, you can use perfect square images at a one-to-one -one aspect ratio with an ideal size of 1080 by 1080 pixels. For great pins, you can use a two to three portrait aspect ratio with an ideal size of 1000 by 1500 pixels. And for amazing pins that take up lots of space on the screen, you'll want to utilize long images that are at least 2,100 pixels long by 1,000 pixels wide. To utilize these sizes, you can plug these dimensions right into your free Canva account and start designing. Tip number three, if you wanna be successful on an image-based platform, you have to start with good images. It doesn't matter how great your products are. A bad photo of a good product equals a bad product in the eyes of your shopper. So if you want to make Pinterest work for you, you have to invest time into your photos, 
Otherwise, you'll unfortunately be wasting your time. For help with product photos using your smartphone, I recommend checking out photography coach Christina Nicole's channel. Just keep in mind that when shooting these photos, you'll be formatting them vertically. So give yourself plenty of room around your product to format your pen. You can always zoom it in later while you're editing. Tip number four, if you're already utilizing short form video content like TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts, you can pin those videos. And since they're already at the perfect aspect ratio for mobile, there's no formatting required. Just be sure not to attach any licensed music to these videos if you plan to re-upload them to Pinterest, as this could get your pin removed for copyright. Pinterest loves videos. So if you're already making videos for other platforms, don't be afraid to recycle this content. Tip number five, Pinterest is a search engine, which means that the rules of SEO apply, the same as we talk about for Etsy. Which, by the way, if you need help with Etsy SEO, be sure to click up here to access my free Etsy SEO workshop. But for Pinterest specifically, we want to focus on the same good keyword practices that you use when optimizing your Etsy listings. This means adding your good keywords into your pin's title, your pin's description, and your pin's alt text. And just a heads up about alt text, while this can be keyword optimized, the purpose of alt text is to describe items to people who struggle with visual impairments. So don't just keyword stuff this area with a random jumble. Instead, use this space to describe what is in the image as if you were trying to describe the image to a blind person. Oh, and tip number six, while you're filling out your pin details, don't forget to add the link to your listing. I can't tell you how many times that I've found something on Pinterest that I'd love to buy, but the user forgot to include a link. So don't forget the link. Now that we've hit a few basics, let's dive into some strategic tips for growth. If you plan to really benefit from Pinterest for your business, this is unfortunately not a platform that will run on autopilot. Tip number seven is to expect to focus on the long game. This means building a long-term strategy and generating a lot of content. Pins on Pinterest are evergreen, which means that they're always searchable and can always drive traffic when discovered. But a quick look at your Pinterest analytics will show you that pins seem to gain the most momentum on the days that they're first pinned. This means that consistency is key for a successful Pinterest account, especially when you're just starting out. Most Pinterest gurus will even tell you to create five new pins a day for maximum exposure. But seriously, ain't nobody got time for that. If you can create five pins a day, sure, Go for it, do that. But if you're like me and have a jam-packed schedule, try to focus on a pin a day if possible. The great thing about pins is that they can be recycled in multiple formats, which can allow you to generate tons of pins in only a few minutes using a site like Canva. For example, I could take a product photo and resize it in Canva to several aspect ratios, add extra images to make a video, or even create a collage of my product photos. In just a few minutes, you can create a week week's worth of pins with minimal effort. As long as your product photos are good, don't be afraid to recycle the same image in several different ways. And tip number eight is to recycle pins when you're strapped for ideas. While I don't recommend that you upload the same pin over and over again each week, you can absolutely upload an old pin that has done well in the past, but optimize it with a new set of keywords and description. This is also a great method to run little keyword experiments. Just be sure to not make this your only strategy because nothing is weirder than going to a Pinterest board only to see the exact three or four images being pinned over and over again. Be smart about it and use them when you have nothing else to post. Now, you're probably wondering how the heck you'll have time to pin all of this content, especially if you plan to pin daily. Tip number nine is to utilize a Pinterest scheduling app. There are tons of these to choose from, though my personal favorites are Later and Tailwind. Both apps have free and paid plans, so you'll need to decide on the plan that will support your needs based on limitations. I personally pay for the Later app in order to schedule my pins, but I recently experimented with Tailwind as well and really enjoyed the flashy interface. If you want something super simple, I recommend Later. If you want something with a lot of bells and whistles, check out Tailwind. Just be aware that at this time, neither of these apps allow you to add alt text to your pins, which kind of sucks. So you're making a minor sacrifice by using them, but to me, the overall time saved is worth it. Personally, I only spend one day a month scheduling all of my pins, then I walk away until the following month. Lastly, tip number 10 is to participate in group boards related to your industry. These are really cool because they allow multiple people to collab on a board together. Then you all share each other's audiences and you get even more eyes on your products. To find Pinterest group boards to join, type in some keywords related to your target audience 
science or industry. Then filter your search to boards. From here, you'll need to click around a bit until you find boards that have multiple profile photos at the top, indicating that it is a group board. If the board is accepting new members, you should see a button that says join. Just be sure to read the board description and follow any rules and guidelines associated with the board. And obviously only pin things related to the topic or theme of the board that you're joining. Once you've joined a few group boards, be sure to take it nice and slow and don't pin 100 items to their public space as this is a good way to get kicked out of the board. Remember, this is a place to collab on a topic, not totally take over a community. Instead, take a look at what others are pinning. If you notice that board is pretty active, start pinning a few times a week. A quick scroll through your group boards will allow you to see how often the same people are pinning based on the profile pictures that you see popping up over and over again. So adjust to the cadence of the community. Being strategic about your social media marketing strategy is an important part of driving traffic to your Etsy shop. And if you need a little help with planning your marketing, be sure to grab my free 2023 marketing calendars. This PDF contains a 12 month printable set of calendars to help you plan ahead for the holidays and popular seasons. Plus each month has personal tips and pointers from me that will help you stay ahead of your competition. You can grab my free calendars up here and in the link down below. Overall, success on Etsy means utilizing social media platforms where your target customers are hanging out online so that you can better target your marketing efforts. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.